and welcome back to the Reapers. Today we are in our A10C and we're looking at air to air. So we've essentially got two main weapons we can use in air to air the GAU 8 gun or a Sidewinder missile. So let's go straight to the armament screen. Obviously, we've got the gun as standard. We can change the gun ammo type here, either high explosive or combat mix. For air to air, high explosive is the best, but realistically, as you're probably going to be doing a round attack mission, you're probably going to have combat mix, which does contain an amount of high explosive rounds in there, so it's, you can still be used for air to air. And we can have the air-to-air -air missiles on pylons 1 and 11. So right-click air-to-air and we've got the AIM-9 Lima, the AIM-9 Mike and the CAP-9. The CAP-9 is a training variant. The AIM-9 is the AIM-9 Sidewinder, obviously. The Mike version is better. They're both all aspect-seeking missiles. They have roughly about the same range, but we just got better maneuverability seeking and a little bit more range in the Mike. So we're going to go for Mike. In fact, we can have a rack of two on there. So let's do that. Request rearming. While we're arming up, let's go and have a look at the controls we're going to use today. Not many. We're going to use gun trigger to fire the gun. We're going to use weapon release to fire the missile. TMS up sh forward to do a small angle seam search. And we've got China Hat forward to do a wide angle search. And TMS aft to re-cage the missile head. And DMS left and DMS right to change the type of gun funnel variables. I think that's all we're going to need. So the AIM 9s are a low range heat seeking missile. They have a passive IR sensor on the tip, which is on a gimbal mount, which can slew in all directions up to a certain slew angle. As for the range, it depends on several variants R, speed, altitude, aspect, as well as the hostile speed, altitude, and aspect. In the best case scenario, going head to head at high altitude against a fast jet, it's possible to get about 10 miles in the shot if you could get an IR lock at that range which is unlikely but ballistically it's possible and on the other end the lowest range is if we were following someone down low up to just under two miles the missile has a passive sensor so it has no form of IFF so all IFF has to be done visually by the pilot and there's no air-to-air -air radar in this plane so all ranging has to be done visually by the pilot as well as for setup, there's almost nothing to do. We're going to turn our master arm to arm. We need to populate our DSMS, so the usual hold our finger on stat, load, stat, load, load all, skip time, loaded, check DSMS. You can see we've got two there mounted on that pylon, two on that pylon. They're currently off. If they were RDY, they're ready and selected to fire. If they were cool, then they are ready but not selected to fire. So let's take off and find some bad guys. Okay, we're airborne now. We've got some conveniently placed F-15s in front of us. So first, let's look at using the missiles. The first thing we have to do, and I completely forgot to show you this because I'm silly, we have to be able to change modes. So we've got HOTAS Master Mode Control button. We're going to press and hold that to turn our HUD into air-to-air -air mode. And you can see it says air-to-air -air there and air-to-air -air on the DSMS. Now you can hear the basic growl of the Sidewinder. That is telling you that it's currently not got a locked. When it does get a lock, then we'll hear a much higher pitched growl. So let's look at ways in which we can achieve a lock. So it's in its basic standard form, as it is now, the seek ahead of the missile that's selected to fire at the moment is represented by this circle here. It's a very small circle and it's a very small area of detection. And all we have to do is maneuver our plane so that one of these guys who is emitting enough heat goes into that circle there. And if he is emitting enough heat to get a lock, then we'll hear a change in tone. Let's see that. Well, you can hear that. Now, if I were to move off, move away, you can see we immediately lose the lock because the sensor is still caged to the bore site of the aircraft. Caged is another word for fixed. So let's move it back. And assuming we're in range, which we are, I'll now fire using the weapon release. Press and hold. Kaboomy. Well, that's that guy down. We can see one missile has come from this, and this is ready. This one. So this is the next one that we'll fire. <clears throat> Let's say I was having a hard time keeping a lock on a target or acquiring a lock. There are other options to lock. The next one is what I think is called seam mode. Now, I may be wrong with that. What I'm going to do is press TM up, TMS up short. And you can see this. we've now got this chap spinning around. So we're covering a little bit more area of search here. As well as that, as soon as we the sensor finds the target and locks, it will uncage itself so that it can then follow within the slew limits of the gimbal of its sensor the target so let's uh, see that happening there we go and you can see now that i can move away from the target and because it's now an uncaged sensor it can now follow him now it can only follow him up to the slew limits of the sensor and let's exceed those slew limits on purpose quite a high slew limit on the uh, aim nine mic so we're gonna have to go quite far 
There you go. We've exceeded it. It's about, I don't know, 45, 50 degrees, something like that. Uh, so I'm going to... Oh, and it's as soon as I've got back, it's re regained the lock. Now, if I want to cancel that lock, because maybe I've um, locked onto the wrong guy, I'm going to press uh, TMS aft short. Move away from the target. Press it. And you can see it recages the currently selected missile back to ballside. So that's how we do that. Now we've got my favourite, which is if we press China hat forward, then it goes into what I call a wide angle search. So it's going to search all around the sensor up to and including the slew limits of the sensor to find what it thinks is the strongest signal closest to the bullseye of the aircraft. So if I press China forward now, you can see it working and it's going to go and try and find the hottest um, heat source it can. I have no idea how it does this, but it just does it. And sometimes it locks on really easily, sometimes it doesn't lock on very easily at all. I'll move it slightly closer and give it a hand. Well, that wasn't very good. It didn't work at all. <clears throat> Usually it goes straight to the target. Oh, it might get in this time. Yeah, well, there you go. I'm going to uh, TMS off to cancel that. Let's see if we can get it a little bit quicker this time. So I'm going to press China forward now. Is it going to go to him? No, it's not. It's going to go wandering again. But it appears to be a system where it just wanders until it finds something. Um, not really sure the point of that, but there you go. Let's see if we can get it to find something. So it's gone off over here now. Oh, well, I've completely lost it now. So there you go. That's that. Let's try it one more time. Let's give it one more chance. Uh, let's try it there. I'm trying to add forward. Off it goes. It's got him. It went straight to him that time. I don't know why. Maybe it was just close enough for, for it to get a bit of a detection on that this time. But as far as I'm aware, that mode is just for essentially searching an area. If you can't see any targets, it will search and pick up any heat signatures that it can find randomly. Okay, so we're still in range. Now, because the sensor on the missile is now uncaged, we can fire at quite a large off ball sight angle. So let's make this missile bend, as I like to call it. So we're going to fire it right down here and fire it there. And what it should do is bend up. There you go. And you can fire, especially in AIM-9 mic, you can fire at a really high off-site off ball angle, depending on the hostile's range, almost up to 45 degrees, and fire, and it'll bend around and hit them. So the next thing I want to show is that by uncaging the missile, we can add lead to the shot, and we may want to add lead to the shot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to achieve a lock with the seam motor, as I call it. So DMS, TMS, short, forward. We've got a lock now. Now what we're going to do is manoeuvre ourselves to the side in this case to simulate us attacking him from the side. Uh, I've got to be careful not to go out of the slew limit of the missile. Because it's uncaged, it's still tracking him. And now I'm going to turn into him from the side. Now, just imagine this was a dogfight. I would want to add some lead. I wouldn't want to shoot directly at him. I'd want to shoot in front of him. And so I'm just going to exaggerate it here. But I'm going to fire somewhere there in front of him. Oops, fired two by accident. My bad. I don't know if... Yeah, the other one didn't lock. So that's how we can show adding some lead. Right, so that was the air-to-air -air missiles. Now, that, now let's go and use the gun. Now, standard, you'll be on this man FXD mode, which means you do not get a gun funnel. So what we need to do is DMS left and right to choose a target type there. So what we're going to do is DMS left, AH-64 Apache, SU-25, F-15. Well, that's what we want because we're fighting F-15s. And that allows the inertial targeting system to give us this gun funnel here based on the fact we'll be fighting F-15s and the wingspan of the F-15. So it's created that gun funnel and the idea, as with all gun funnels, is to maneuver the hostile so that his wingspan is clipping the side of the gun funnel and it will automatically give the lead so that we can shoot him if he's maneuvering. Out of interest, as well as the type of target there, we've also got our ammo amount there at 1130. As well as that, we've got our ball sight cross here. That's where the gun bullets are actually firing now, this, we can use this gun cross if we don't want to use the funnel, and I hate using the funnel, but it means we have to add our own lead to the shot because this is just a ball-sided fixed targeting cross. So let's go and have a go with this. Now, the gun is always selected, so when using... Where's the F-15s? So when using those uh, sidewinders before, the gun is still selected and you can still fire it at any point. Right, I'm just going to slow down. I am notoriously bad at using gun funnels, so I'm probably going to make a hash of this, but we'll give it a go. Is this the last guy? No, we've got another guy. So what we're going to do is a slow kind of pitch up to kind of simulate us being in a chase and let's see if we can get him. So I wait until he touches the gun funnel. Beep. And I missed. Of course I did. Let's try down. <laughs> oh, I got him. <laughs> 
Well, uh, you know, go and practice your gun battle. I'm sure you'll be a lot better at it than me. Personally, I like using the cross, especially if they're not manoeuvring. So I'm just going to add a little bit of lead that I think I need to add. And get on! And pow! That's how you do it. And uh, there you go. So that is using the gun. And if it was a different plane down here I was fighting against, then I could go and choose an A10 or a, well, uh, whatever. A64. It seems you can only have a, a few planes you can select from, so you have to, if it was an SU-27, you would just select an F-15. If it was a Harrier, then you might choose a SU-25. It, it's whatever you can get the closest wingspan to, basically. And that's it. To be honest, I find it quite a hard gun to use in combat because it doesn't have any traces, which makes it really hard to use. Right, so to summarise, we've showed arming, selecting and using the AIM-9 in three different ways, and setting up and aiming the air-to-air -air gun in two different ways. I hope that helps, and see you later.